from a skilled robbery where the perpetrators cut open the wall to access the safe, to some young men pulling off a heist stealing many dirt bikes, and a girl attempting to break into cars only to issue a death threat when caught. And let's not forget the classic shoplifter move, knocking an officer to the ground while attempting to escape. Here are 50 moments captured on film where thieves were caught in the act. A guy was on the verge of driving away with a car when the owner caught him off guard. The owner promptly asked him to leave the car. After a few minutes, he reluctantly exited the vehicle with his belongings. Who is this? The guy you get in his How car? Get in my car! Yo, get the f out my car, bro! Yo. <laughs> What's wrong with you, bro? I don't give a f yo, get out of my car! Back up. Back up. Okay, get out of my car, please. Back up. Get on my car, please, bro. How you gonna how you gonna do me like this? Bro, why are you in my please Sir. go go about your day you up, bro, please? Why are you recording me? Bro, you are you thieving? Why you recording? Me? Who gave you who gave you the key, bro? Somebody somebody dropped those keys off to me. I don't know. I don't who? I don't know. Look, who ain't you lying? Ain't you lying? I will give you a hundred dollars. I will give you a hundred dollars right now. Watch out, watch out. People shouldn't be making lame excuses for common sense stuff like this. I mean, who hops into someone's car without asking? Two men were in the car when they faced a confrontation with a man whose bike the driver had loaded onto the back. The upset owner began yelling and shouting, demanding the return of his bike and warning that the cops were on their way. Hey, give me my bike! Give me my bike! Now! That's my bike! Check it out the back now! Cops are on their way! The passenger, in disbelief, explained that he hadn't assisted in loading the bike, but the owner continued yelling and insisting they get out of the car. No, take it off the car now! Take it off the car! Take it off! Take it off now! Take it off now! Take it off now! Take it off! Get out the car! Get out the car! Get out the car! Get out! Get out! I don't give a Get out of the car! Get out of the car! I don't give a Get out now! Get the out! I don't give a I didn't help him I don't give a Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. Get my shit down. Help him get my shit down. Help him get my shit down! It's somewhat satisfying to witness individuals who engage in such deceitful acts being caught off guard. This man resorted to stealing gas from someone else's vehicle after running out and needing it to reach the gas station. However, the owner of the vehicle noticed, started recording, and confronted him. What are you doing? I'm sorry, dude. I gotta get some gas. I'm sorry, brother Dan. I just ran out of gas, so I was gonna get a net to go to the gas station. So you're gonna yeah, take I mine? A little, I was, dude. I'm sorry, bro. I'm serious, I'm sorry. I apologize. I saw you come open my sh so I laid down. Yeah. I watched you walk past, check it out, and I knew you were gonna do that, I'm sorry, bro. Brother Dan. No, seriously, I, I. You... This is your truck right here. Yeah, I was just gonna. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm sorry, brother. Nah, it ain't no. I'm sorry, bro. All right, well. Despite the man's numerous apologies, he had engaged in theft, which is clearly an unacceptable act. A lady was making her way with a stolen liquor bottle from the store when a vigilant man noticed and decided to follow her. He confronted her, asking her to return the bottle. In response, the woman claimed to be homeless as a justification for her actions. The man pointed out that if she was truly in need, she should have stolen food instead of liquor. Despite his willingness to help by offering to pay for her, the woman responded with a barrage of profanity. This led the man to change his mind about assisting her. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You'll be arrested. You'll be arrested. You'll be arrested for assault. I'm sorry, lady, but you, you can't steal liquor out of a store. You can't steal. You can't steal liquor out of the store. You should have stole food. That's what you should have stole. I have a heart. You know what? I'll pay for it. I'll pay for your fing look. How much is the looker? How much is the looker? It's a bottle of vodka and whatever else she grabbed. 
You know what? I, <laughs> I was going to pay for it, but I changed my mind. Okay. Well, I'm not paying for it now. How much is the liquor? How much is it? Huh? Yeah. You shouldn't be stealing it. Why didn't you buy? Why didn't you get some food? I know you're homeless, but you know what? No, I'm not helpless. Why don't you put? Why don't you give it back? Give it back to me right now. Give it back to me right now. I will do that. I can do that. Nevertheless, the determined guy persisted and successfully retrieved the stolen liquor from her. A guy named Tim swiped a speaker, but his misdeed caught up with him when the owner showed up at his door. The owner, armed with a witness to the theft, confronted Tim, giving him an ultimatum, return the speaker or face jail time. Yeah. Just wait out, dude. Is Tim around here? Yeah, right here. You got my speaker? No. You ain't got my speaker? No. Well, I got a witness that says otherwise. You got two minutes to give it up, or I'm going to have every cop in town here. Your choice. And I'm going to your manager. You saw the Huh? I did not. You're, you went You come to the building, you're going to jail. Matter of fact, I'm glad it's here and it's on video. Because you know what? Cops are coming. Your ass is going to jail. Keep recording. So you call, hey, Raya, call the cops. I want the cops here. I got a witness. You stole this. You work for people. Call the cops. Sign complaints on you right now, man. Hope you like jail, because that's where you're going. Tim chose to return the speaker, but the owner, undeterred, called the cops to ensure that Tim faced the consequences for his actions. This guy opted for a rather unconventional approach to his attempted robbery. He approached another man and requested whatever was in his pockets. When questioned if he was being robbed, the assailant insisted he was merely asking, not robbing yet. The man complied and handed over the items in his pockets. However, the audacious thief didn't stop there. He escalated the situation by demanding weed. As his demands grew more aggressive, he resorted to using offensive language when his request for weed went unmet. All oh, that. Where the weed at, bro? I ain't got no weed. I ain't got no weed, bro. And I swear to God, any one of them bullets would've hit my peoples, bro, I'd've killed you. You hear me? Yeah, I know. Bro, I ain't got no weed, bro. Don't touch me, bro. Don't touch me. Everything goes. Or D.I., whoever, but this is some whole ass got to pay for that. Weed stands out for its audacity. When this guy witnessed two individuals using a screwdriver to break into other people's houses, he didn't hesitate to take action. Instead of backing off, he courageously started recording them and confronted the would-be burglars. Now these two little mugs are f***ing walking around the avenue and trying people's doors in this. This cunt here, I'm just giving a f***ing, obviously I've just f***ing clipped his face off because he's been trying people's doors like a little f***ing he is. You're a junkie mate, he's a f***ing wrong and what you planning on doing with that like? What are you planning on doing on that? Yeah. Look at the screen, a junkie, What are you have, planning on doing with that, like? On You're a f mug, mate. If I see you trying people's doors again, I'm going to snap your f jaw. F off. F off. If I was a junkie, I'd have marks on that. Honestly, I'm, there's no skin there. I have marks, man. This man's proactive response deserves commendation for helping to thwart the criminal activity. A woman witnessed another woman breaking into someone's car and, without turning a blind eye, decided to take a stand. She approached the culprit, questioning her actions, and demanded that she return the stolen items. This is trying to do.
Excuse me, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? Put it back. Mm -mm. This woman's intervention deserves praise for stepping up and confronting wrongdoing. A man stole a bike from the road that wasn't locked, and he found himself confronted by someone inquiring about the hourly rental rate for the bike. To his surprise, the bike belonged to the friend of the person questioning him. This is your car? What the f man? We got him red handed! You mother you f mother it was him, dude! That guy stole your bike! Didn't even care, he's like I was like, did you scan this bike? He's like, no, I just no, found it. Go for your, your bike. Oh, my bike. <laughs> Run, get my bike. This incident serves as a reminder that people should learn proper manners and understand that taking someone else's belongings without permission is unacceptable. Two people were attempting to break into a car, and when confronted by a woman, they brazenly claimed that Lucy had instructed them to get into the car. However, the irony unfolded when the woman they were talking to turned out to be Lucy herself. She sternly instructed them to stay away from the car, discovering they even had spare keys raised serious concerns. You're about to get in this car! Can we call yes or no? Yeah, call the car. No, there's no need to do that. So give me the keys! Lucy has Who? I'm Lucy. I'm Lucy. Give me the keys right now. So what are you doing? Why are you trying to get in my car? Why? Look at you! You're up. Look that. at you! You're both up! No, we're not. Yeah. We're calling them. Get the away from my car! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! We're bugging. You stole our car. We're calling the car. Yo, chill out, bro. Who's car? Whose car? This is my mother's car. This is my mother's car. Oh, you got a spare key? You got a spare key? Yo, you you got it? Right now. I will call the cops right so now. Cool. Lucy just told me I could do this. I'm Lucy. Oh, no. Give me, give me her f***ing key. Damn. Call the cops. They're on the phone right now. And guess what? The cop, the cops know this car is stolen. So you're gonna get caught driving it. All right. I'm gonna throw up. I'm about to throw up on you. The woman promptly called the police to report the incident, hoping that these individuals would be arrested for their illicit actions. A guy boldly grabbed a large tray filled with chicken and casually walked away without paying. Despite an employee's attempt to stop him, he remained undeterred. Surprisingly, others in the vicinity joined in, taking advantage and helping themselves to some chicken from the tray. There you go. <laughs> It's quite astonishing to witness such audacious behavior over a tray of chicken. A woman was trying to get away after stealing, but the store employee caught her red-handed and came outside to confront her. They engaged in a really heated argument, and after some time, the employee went as far as throwing things at the woman while she had a child with her.
I'm loving it now. If you got steel milk, please leave. If you got a steel milk, you're a fat ass mother. You got some at the table. I'm like, throw it. Throw it. Throw it off. You talking. You talking. You talking. You talking. You talking. Okay. You're going to upset them goddamn tires. Okay. Y'all pull up. Pull up. Pull out, pull out, pull out. Get them babies in there. Oh, my <gasps> Why are you? Oh, my God. Please come back in here. Pull out. She got in her car and pulled away to save herself and the child from the damage. Picture working the entire night during a night shift, thinking everything is fine as you wrap up around 4 a.m., then you encounter someone messing with your car, attempting to steal the catalytic converter. A woman, noticing the theft, confronts the thief and demands he stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Nothing? 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 What are you doing? Stay right here. I suggest you stay right here. I suggest you stay right here, sir. Oh, yeah? Run me over. Despite her efforts, the man pays no heed, successfully swiping the catalytic converter and making a quick getaway in his car. Attempting to burglarize a house took an unexpected turn for a guy when the homeowner caught him in the act. Instead of facing legal consequences, the intruder found himself cleaning the shower, a consequence far less severe but certainly unconventional. Here's our mind, girl. I'm not your girl, right? My name is Aiden Ambrose, dude. I know. Keep going. You're not, if, you were, if you're in the room, I'm not going to do that. I'm just saying. You should have that or the cops, bro. You came into my house. Come on. I still see some spots okay, right there. Okay, okay. I see you. I see you. I can also tell you still. Okay. You might want to move those bottles. There's some stuff right by the bottles. You might want to. This is not my hair right here, right? I don't give a It could be mine. I don't care. You came into my house. Come on, man. What are you doing with your cleaning service? Hey, you wanted to break into my house. Keep going, bro. This peculiar outcome serves as a reminder of the unpredictability of trespassing into someone's home. A woman was caught sitting in a random car by its owner. Upon discovery, the owner insisted she leave the car and remove her belongings. Get out of my car. Oh, oh my god. Get she out of my car. Oh my god. What is going on? Whoa. Get out. What the f Bro. Oh, so f wow. Oh my god. Whew. I'm so sorry, man. Get your stuff out, please. What stuff? You're in my car! All this stuff. All this shit. Is this my What are you doing in my car? Oh my god. Wow, what a nightmare. Wow, somebody's actually... The woman justified her actions by claiming she was freezing cold and sought refuge in the random car. <laughs> Are you sorry about that? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. This is f***ed up, bro. You went through my sh you mean Get I, the f*** out. I did not go Get through your f*** out. This is my car. This is my car. Is that my, is that my Get the f*** out. Get the f*** out. Get 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 out. Even if you're freezing cold, that doesn't mean it's okay to jump into someone's car without asking. Respect people's space, even in chilly weather. Two men caught a woman shoplifting, and they confronted her, urging her to return the stolen items she had concealed in her bag. The woman vehemently protested, claiming innocence and blaming others. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna fight you. Okay, please, I'm not gonna fight you. Let me catch my breath, I am. You wanna play with me on location, you can go Please. Walk. Let me catch my brother, man. Go. Please ask them that. Let's Sir, go. I'm not gonna run from you. Please don't put a handcuff on me. I'm not gonna run. To I'm finna talk to him if you, to me. if you let me go. If you let me go and talk. Walk. I can't catch yes. my brother. Fruit, huh? 
Come on, miss. Oh, wait, please. Come I'm going to go in and talk to you. Please don't do it, miss. sir. I'm miss. going in and talk to her. Please. I need to have some of my stuff out of your bag. I'm going to give it to you, Tad. Drop the bag then. Drop the bag. Okay, huh? Drop the bag on the ground. Here you go. Drop the bag. Damn, I'm out of breath. Let me catch my breath, please. You need to turn around, put your hands I'm behind your back. And the I, wait a minute, I'm going to stop playing y'all, please. Yes. Please. Causing a bigger scene than you have. I'm not. Y'all just doing too goddamn much grabbing me. Well, stop grabbing me. Just go ahead and roll out. Please. Hey, he better grab me, ma'am. You got me. Well, well, Video take this and I'm telling him to hold up. Police department on the way then. I'm better go away. What move? You ain't got to walk behind me. I'm gonna go talk to the man. Please walk with me. Please. I am. If you stop, please. I'm talking to you right. Let's go. God damn, y'all ain't got right, to grab me. Come on. And I can't hardly got that breathe. You're on camera. Surrounded in the mall, so you might as well just come talk. Listen. I'm gonna come. Please, sir. Ma'am. Please. Please, sir. I'm coming. I'm not finna move. Please. Ma'am, please. Despite her protests, the men held her until the police arrived to ensure she faced the consequences of her actions. At 3 o'clock, the car owner caught a man red-handed in the act of stealing his car. Rather than letting the thief go, the owner took an unconventional approach. He offered the would-be thief a free ride straight to the police station, ensuring that justice would be served for the attempted theft. So, this right here thought it was okay steal from me stole my bitch car and thought it was all right and thought he was gonna get away that was the that was the funniest part he actually thought he was gonna get away and he stole it at three o'clock this morning and i just called him tell me i'm not no that's so busy look at you show him your face the thief surely got a surprise he wasn't expecting after committing a theft, a man was making his way downstairs when the owner caught sight of him. Despite the owner's attempt to stop him, the thief tried to flee, prompting a pursuit. Hey, look, who made that? Hey, let's try to go back. Come, 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 hey, come, come, hey, come, 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 hey, come, 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 Despite the thief's determined efforts to escape, he couldn't outrun the owner, and eventually, he was apprehended. A man was caught in the act of stealing someone's phone, and when confronted by the owner, he feigned innocence, claiming the phone belonged to him. In an attempt to resolve the situation, the thief approached a police officer on the scene. However, the officer, recognizing the inappropriate setting, refused to intervene, stating that it was not a matter of resolution at the hospital. No, you went. No, you went. I thought your wife was in here. So how you stole my phone? Bro, I didn't take your damn phone. Bro. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And I caught your way. Phone, but I put my wife up here dying. And I, okay, so that's his phone. No, this is my phone, phone right now. He he just I'm gave it back to me. Okay. Phone, get in my I tracked phone. it all the way back here. Okay, well, my wife is. I'm on you. Sir. I'm on your sir. Cause you don't steal for nobody. Bro, right? I ain't stole your phone. Yes, you did. Okay. How you got it? I had a slight. How you got it? Where you leave the phone? All right, all right hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Whatever you handle outside is your business. That, I feel you. I understand that. If, 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 that, that. if you tracked your phone, you have got every right to be upset. But this is not something we need to handle at a hospital. Okay, there's... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him. He, he ain't got nobody in him. Okay. No, so no, we don't. No, we don't. Go, 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 go to, go to the room then. Stop for a second. Where your wife at? She no, the she ain't. No, the she ain't. You better get your ass. You better get your somewhere. You better get your somewhere because I'm on your ass, boy. Soon, 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 soon as he walk away, I'm on your ass. Hey, Sheriff, stop. 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 Hey, Sheriff
You don't steal from me. I ain't never. I don't with nobody. And I'm finna make. I'm finna make. I'm finna make. Damn sure you ain't gonna steal from nobody else. I don't know how he stole in my position. You don't know how you stole the phone with your hand. With your hand, dumb. With your hand, how you picked that mother? You picked that mother. I got your ass. I got your way. I so he stole before y'all. And I'm finna beat his ass. Unfortunately, despite the involvement of law enforcement, the owner was not able to retrieve his stolen phone. These young individuals made the regrettable decision to take someone else's bike. One of them boldly proceeded to cut the lock, showing no hesitation, even though the act was being recorded. Is that your bike? Huh? Is that your bike? When questioned about the ownership of the bike, he displayed indifference and continued with the theft, successfully getting away with it. A guy jumped the fence and entered someone's property, thinking he could go unnoticed. However, his stealthy attempt failed when the owner emerged from the house and confronted him. In response, the intruder offered an apology, claiming he wanted to borrow something. Uh-uh, take your ass right back around here, get right up out this gate. No, I don't give a You don't go off in this property and tell somebody's here, don't you hear? No, there ain't no slowing down. You see that sign that says property right there? You see that shit? I don't give a f do you know this ain't your property, this ain't his property, this is my property. I'm sorry. Get your ass outside that gate. Sorry. I don't give a what you needed to borrow. Kevin didn't tell me you were coming here. Get your ass inside, Lulu. Now. The incident raises questions about the appropriateness of borrowing without seeking the owner's permission beforehand. A man entered someone's house and stole a vacuum cleaner. When the owner confronted him, he initially lied and denied breaking into the house. However, his deception was exposed when the owner found the thief's phone left behind in the house. What were you doing in my house? I was knocking on your door. I'm looking for my phone. Why is your phone in my house? Why is my phone in your house? Good question. Is it in your house? You're going to have to explain this to the cops. I didn't take, did you grab my phone when I set it down when I was showing you this? I didn't touch your phone. Where's my phone? Did you take my phone? You're a horrible liar too, dude. Where's my phone? How'd you get in my house? I didn't touch your house or go in your house. I was knocking on the door. Well, we're going to stay separate until the police get here. So okay, we don't. That's fine, but where's my phone? I can't give it to you. It's my proof that you're in my house. I wasn't in your house. Well, somebody was. Somebody was in my house and my vacuum's missing. I didn't take your vacuum. Why would I take your vacuum, your vacuum dude? I, I don't know. Why is your cell phone in my house? I don't know. Did you grab That's kind it? of creepy, bro. Do you remember? It's kind of creepy. Go in your house, dude. Then why are you I'm so nervous? Why are you sweating so much? Because I'm, I've been looking for my phone for 40 no one's No one sweats because they're looking for Give their phone. phone. You can't hold my property. After the confrontation, police showed up and took the guy straight to jail for the theft. A man broke into someone's house with his belongings. The homeowner caught him in the act and demanded that he leave the premises. Next time, you play with me? No, no, no. Next time, no. you don't try to break it no okay. real Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, I, yeah. Get your and get the step. In. Stop stealing, my. Okay, okay. Stop stealing. Yeah, we're, we're, Is that tight for you? Huh? Is that tight for you out here? No, it ain't huh? tight out for me. Why are you stealing in? I, I'm a breath. I'm a godly person. I'm really godly person. I'm really godly person. I don't person. give a f here. Take this. I don't need this. Sir. Hey, listen, bitch. Sir, sir. Okay. 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 Take that and go buy you something to eat. Okay. You hear me? Okay. Get the out of my building. Upon realizing that the intruder was homeless, the owner showed compassion and offered him some money to buy food. 
A woman who had stolen numerous items attempted to flee, but a courageous bystander decided to take a stand and prevent her escape. Despite the thief's attempts to act innocent, the brave woman intervened and detained her until the police arrived. A guy attempting to break into cars, checking for unlocked doors, was caught red-handed by a vigilant man who started recording and confronted him. Initially, the would-be thief feigned innocence, denying any wrongdoing. Come on, be, be honest, bro. What's what you doing, man? What you doing, man? I'm, I'm, I'm watching you, man. Come on, what, what you doing? Be honest. I'll tell you. You're caught. This, this is my wife's car, man. Mm -hmm. I took, this is my wife's car. Stop, stop uh, playing. Stop. Started with mine. You thought it was yours. Where, where your car keys at? Right. Where, where your car keys at? Huh? Yeah, I must have dropped. Oh, you must have dropped, huh? You yeah. must have dropped. So you must have dropped them all over, huh? Because I'm seeing you go from car to car, checking on see if the door is open. Yeah, I'm man. sitting in my work truck back there. I'm watching you go from car to car, trying to see if the door open. You trying to get a quick lift, man? I'm not stupid, bro. I was born yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about. Man, you, sure, man. You, you trying to play dumb, bro? This, the daddy, you, you, you tripping, bro? Chill out. I ain't gonna do nothing. That's just for protection, you know? That's for protection. But luckily, if somebody else was out here, they would have put it on your ass. I'm just letting you know what's up, man. That that's just the way to go. What's going, man? What you on? I'm, 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 I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to drop knowledge on you. They just wanna. However, it didn't take long for him to resort to offensive language and aggressive behavior. A man stole $50 from someone's car while cleaning. When confronted, he lied. But it wasn't long until he got caught. Hey, did you go out my purse and get the $50? No. Okay, but by you was in here cleaning the car. I ain't feel nothing. Yeah, yeah, what you say? You up there moving your lips and your mouth. Come on, just hold the phone, tell you, please. He was swiftly exposed when his pockets were checked, revealing the stolen money. Because, um, I ain't feeling nothing. You, you acting like you got something there? You acting like you got something? A woman two individuals got into a fight and onlookers attempted to intervene to break up the altercation. The conflict originated when a pickpocket caught in the act, attempted to escape, but was apprehended, leading to a physical altercation. Damn. Okay, the police are doing their job, actually. Congratulations to them, bro. Big up. What's the excuse this dude's carrying a big knife out of? Hopefully, nobody sustained injuries during the scuffle. Two individuals attempted to steal a motorcycle from someone's home in broad daylight, but their ill-fated plan took a turn for the worse. As they were making their escape with the motorcycle, the owner dashed out of the house to confront them. However, the confrontation didn't end there. More people emerged from the house, and the community members from the street joined forces, ensuring that these individuals regretted their misguided decision. The police unexpectedly intercepted a man attempting to steal. Upon inspection, the officers halted him and discovered a multitude of stolen items concealed within his bag. Okay, let's see. What the hell is that? Huh? We'll see what it Yeah, I just asked him for a receipt as well. Oh my days, that's a massive knife, man. What the hell, this dude? So they literally trucked him from the... Oh my days, bro. What the heck? A person who stole a 10-year-old's phone found himself confronted by the boy's father. The father, cleverly disguising his true intent, approached the thief, pretending to be interested in buying the phone. Hey, 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 hey,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where did you get this from? Oh, it's just been a, a phone I've had for a while. Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got a new phone now, so yeah, I'm just selling, it, just selling it. Oh, true. Um, yeah. I've noticed, yeah, yeah, I was, I was looking for a phone, a cheap phone. How much are you selling this for again? About 1500 yeah. 1500 on, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um. The thief, unaware, agreed to sell and proudly mentioned he had just acquired the phone. Seizing the moment, the father revealed that the phone was, in fact, his son's. The phone's features, case, and even a distinctive sticker matched, creating too many coincidences for the thief to explain away. Any questions? Yeah, no, it, does it turn on? Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. It does, yeah. Okay. I, just, I always put those stickers on my phone. Um, just to... Yeah, it's, it's weird enough because it's saying it had the same scratches too. It's saying, hey, you have this is the thing as well. I know it's with my son's phone. My son's only 10. I'm not very good at putting the screen protectors yeah. on. That's why that yeah. bug was there. Yeah. But my son, my son lost it. Yeah, he's only 10 years old. And so I, you're buying this phone then? Yeah, I'm buying this phone. Yeah. Yeah. It actually well, got stolen, believe it or not. This phone got stolen, that's yeah, not good. It actually got stolen. But, um, to be honest, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Yep. Um, I know who you are. You're the. This is actually my son's phone. I saw your ad placement on Marketplace, and yeah, it's. This is actually my son's phone, and I found you, and yeah, I'm here to get my son's phone, mate. I think you got me mistaken with someone else, mate. No, um, actually not, because this is exactly the same. I even showed my son, and he was like, "Is this your phone?" And this is why I'm here today. I'm I think. Of you. I think. No, you like. The phone's obviously going to look the same as other phones. They don't just sell this no, uh, that original is, model. No, it, you know what's, what got me though? It's the same case. It's the same case. Well, that's a coincidence. It's a coincidence. No, like, it's the same case and the same sticker. Like, why do you even take the sticker off? That's, 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 sticker that's the red flag right there. It's the sticker I put on all the red flag right there. I'm going to take this back. I'm not going to give you any money because this is actually my son's phone. Bro, that's not your son's phone. My son's phone, it is. That's not, that's not your son's phone. It doesn't phone. even turn on. If you're not going to buy it, mate. Scam, if you're not going to buy it, you're Why are you scamming me, man? I'm, I'm going to take this away. Can you take this away? This is actually my son's phone. Not, get get off. That's not your son's Get off me. This is my son's phone. That's not your son's phone. This is my son's phone. You're not taking you're getting any money out of it. Despite the thief's attempts at justification, the father successfully reclaimed his son's phone from the would-be thief. This bold thief demonstrated audacity by deciding to steal a catalytic converter from a car in broad daylight on a busy road. Unfazed by the halted traffic caused by his actions, he fearlessly worked underneath the car, taking his time to remove the catalytic converter with apparent nonchalance. They are stealing the car in the middle of the road. Once successful, he casually placed the stolen item into his vehicle and drove away, leaving behind a disrupted scene and a vehicle owner to deal with the consequences of his daring theft. A pickpocket, notorious for her deeds in the town, finally got caught by the locals this time. They recorded her in the act and made it clear that she's now on social media. Although her partner managed to escape, she wasn't as lucky. Despite being caught off guard, she somehow managed to evade immediate capture. Tourist guard, we see you here all the time. You're all over social media. You are a pickpocket. Yes, you and your partner who has now mysteriously disappeared. Give me my cigarettes. No. Do you want him back? Keep it. Do you want him back? Keep it. Let's go speak to the police. Keep it. And I'll show them all ah, the videos. Ah, of ah, ah, pick ah, ah, pick Shame on you. Yeah. Uh, Buddy. Pick 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 Budd
I've got you on social media so many times by the roundabout. You and your partner, who? Where is he? He's gone over that way. Of course he's gone. Yeah, shame on you. Yeah. Yeah. The vigilant locals warned her that they would ensure her arrest if she attempted such activities again in the future. Where's that? Come on, walk away. I'll see you next time, and next time I'll make sure you get arrested. Damn. And don't come back. This kind of people really need to get a job. A guy attempted to make off with someone's bike he picked up from the road, but his plans took an unexpected turn when, out of the blue, the police appeared and tried to intercept him with their vehicle. The cops successfully stopped the guy and promptly arrested him for theft. In January 2021, a man in Canada received a surprise when his home security camera captured someone attempting to steal packages from his front porch. Swiftly reacting, the man rushed to confront the would-be thief, leading to an unexpectedly hilarious turn of events. Yeah, that's done. You're done. The failed theft was embarrassing on its own, but the situation escalated when the thief's getaway car got stuck in a stubborn patch of snow. The guy remained stuck, providing ample time for the police to arrive and apprehend him. You're done. Cops is coming. Cops is coming. It turned out to be a day full of misfortune for the would-be package thief. A man attempting to escape with stolen items found himself caught red-handed and confronted by the owner. Undeterred, the owner followed the thief in an attempt to retrieve the stolen items. However, the situation escalated when the desperate thief, going to extremes, started picking up bottles from the ground and hurling them at the pursuing man. Yeah, Susie, serious. Yeah, 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 the thief went to great lengths to avoid getting caught with those stolen items. Two thieves in a black vehicle attempted to steal a car, not a parked one but a moving car, by intimidating and threatening the driver. They blocked the path of a white car, forcing it to stop immediately. One of the armed robbers exited their vehicle, approached the driver, and demanded that he surrender his car. The driver complied without offering any resistance, and the thief now had control of the white vehicle. However, things took an unexpected turn for the thief. The stolen car turned out to be a manual transmission, and the thief had no knowledge of how to operate it. He struggled to start the car, and at times, it seemed like he wanted to ask his victim for driving lessons. A daring car theft took a dramatic turn when the thief, a woman, crashed the stolen vehicle. The aftermath was captured by a vigilant bystander who recognized both the culprit and the stolen car. 
Well, you good? Only on 184. Only on 184. Yo, what's up? Yo, but she out. Yo, yeah, yo, but don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> yeah, where you going? <laughs> yeah, where you going, bro? You just crashed these niggas. You trying to run away? Keep me on. Yo, bro. Bro, didn't they you up last time? Yeah. The bitch fucked you up in the store, right? Yeah. You she fucked you up. And now you crashing, bro. You foul, bro. You got MC, you got like that. No, I don't see. Undeterred, the person followed the woman, documenting her attempt to walk away from the crash scene, ensuring a record of the incident. Now this guy pulled off a seriously audacious move. Right in front of the owners, he boldly cut the locks off bikes parked on the road and nonchalantly rode away with them. Cool. Sure it is, yeah. Two bikes? They're both yours? Yeah, one's mine. Really? Both of them? Yo, it's on dogs. That's some nerve, isn't it? Two men pulled up in a blue car with a clear mission to steal the catalytic converter from another car, armed with a carjack. One of them worked underneath the targeted car, successfully removing the catalytic converter. After completing their theft, they swiftly drove away, escaping the scene. A guy was caught red-handed while shoplifting, but instead of expressing remorse for his actions, he began yelling at the people who tried to stop him and attempted to portray himself as a victim. Who's the, who's the woman? Uh, security. He's like a secret chopper. No, social security. He's social security. something. Social security is playing close. She may be a cop. They don't get here that fast. It's quite intriguing to witness individuals resort to childish behavior when caught off guard. An unidentified individual entered Wells Fargo Bank on Azalea Road just after noon. The suspect swiftly handed a note to the teller, demanding money while verbally threatening to shoot her if she did not comply. Despite no visible weapon, the seriousness of the threat led to the teller relinquishing the cash. The suspect, characterized by heavy dreads and a beard, made a quick escape after obtaining the money. Authorities have released images of the perpetrator in the hope that the community can assist in identifying him. While walking downtown, passing the mall on Market Street on the way to Ross, a man noticed someone entering who seemed intent on shoplifting. Intrigued, he discreetly followed the individual and, to his surprise, also observed another person shoplifting right next to him. The person in the yellow shirt appeared inexperienced, making no attempt to conceal the toilet paper and hesitating before trying to exit Walgreens. Interestingly, he spent significant time in the toilet paper section, eventually settling on the cheapest brand.
Yeah, buddy. So what are you up to? In contrast, the individual who seemed more well-off confidently stuffed his pockets with what appeared to be dress socks or cologne, displaying a sense of swagger. Despite the apparent difficulty faced by the person in the yellow shirt, attempting to steal the cheapest toilet paper, the one who hid merchandise in his pocket succeeded in shoplifting. However, the yellow shirt individual's attempt was thwarted as security intervened, catching him as he tried to leave without paying for the toilet paper. Consequently, he had to pay for the toilet paper before leaving the store. You there? So, uh, did you get that benchmark? Are you running it? Oh, really? I didn't get any calls from you. Yeah. I don't know, maybe because I was calling you at the same time or something. Yeah, but anyhow. Well, I'm over at the uh, uh, Walgreens. I gotta go. I'm about to get run out. Alright, bye. He tried to pay for the toilet paper with the change he had, and as a reward for not shoplifting, the security guard gave him money to help him buy it. It struck the man as interesting to witness two people of obviously different means engaging in shoplifting in such distinct ways. This video from Favtrip captures a shoplifter in action. Upon entering the store, he grabs two candies but slyly hides one in his pocket. Unaware of the continuous camera surveillance, he proceeds to the cashier, showing only one candy. The clerk points out that he's been caught on live camera red-handed and insists that he must show the hidden candy and pay for it. Please take out one more candy from your pants pocket as we are watching you. Okay, have they're on. Yeah, they are. You will be on YouTube now. Oh, hang on. Yeah, shit, you nice. We got YouTube video. <laughs> it must be a shameful moment for the shoplifter. 
in Norco, California, an 80-year-old liquor store owner, Craig Cope, turned the tables on a would-be thief attempting to rob his store. As the assailant entered with an assault weapon, Cope, ready for action, quickly fired a shot, hitting the robber in the arm. The surveillance footage captures the suspect fleeing the scene and escaping in a getaway car with accomplices. The four individuals were later apprehended at a hospital and arrested, showcasing that attempting foolish crimes can lead to unfortunate consequences. A man tried to rob a Missouri liquor store, but he didn't expect that John Lewis Alexander, a veteran and former prison guard, would be there. When Alexander told the man to put out his cigarette, the robber pulled out a weapon. Without hesitation, Alexander grabbed his own weapon and pointed it at the criminal. The gentleman could come in the, uh, the door there, smoke a cigarette, and I asked him to take a cigarette back outside. You never know exactly what to do, you just hope you do the right. Faced with this unexpected turn, the robber quickly left the store, realizing he was outmatched. The four men, donned in black masks, brazenly entered a meat market, also serving as a check cashing store on West 43rd Street. While each of the individuals was armed with their own weapon, they demanded cash and proceeded to steal money from the register counter. <laughs> After completing their task, they swiftly fled the scene in a white pickup truck. However, they made their robbery succeed while no other employee or person was injured. In a bold and brazen heist, a group of thieves targeted a weapon store in Westland, executing a well-planned break-in captured on surveillance cameras. The daring act involved crashing a stolen SUV into the store, allowing the perpetrators to seize over 50 weapons. The entire incident unfolded in the early hours of Sunday morning, with the criminals strategically selecting valuable weapons. Surveillance footage reveals the thieves abandoning the stolen vehicle at the scene and making a quick escape to a waiting getaway vehicle across the street. It hurts. It truly does hurt because they're, whatever they do with their we don't know what they're going to do, where they're going to do it at, what. It's just terrible. They, they got the good stuff. <laughs> they got the expensive stuff. Yeah, they strategically picked and choose. The audacious crew did not stop at one target, as they replicated the same modus operandi at a pawn shop in Dearborn Heights later that night. In both instances, the thieves displayed a level of precision, grabbing specific items of significant value. Last night, we did engage in a vehicle pursuit with uh, some of the suspects, uh, which the officers uh, very appropriately uh, terminated the pursuit because it became very dangerous to the public. The owner of Armed in Michigan, one of the targeted stores, expressed shock at the calculated nature of the break-ins. Determined to enhance security, he plans to fortify measures at his establishment. This is a, a very serious uh, call out to the public that if you recognize anyone in the photographs, please contact the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. I mean, there was a shop in Livonia. They broke through the ceiling and came down. Um, so they, they don't care that they'll just come it's kind, of, it's kind of savage. They'll do whatever they want. They don't care. The incidents underscore the lengths to which criminals may go to obtain weapons, posing a challenge for law enforcement and businesses alike. In Miami's Village Flea Market, chaos erupted in a violent smash-and-grab robbery. Picture this. Masked and armed men storming a jewelry kiosk, jumping the counter and swiftly scuffling with and assaulting employees. One poor guy even lost his shirt in the process. These brazen thieves weren't wasting any time, smashing glass display cases, grabbing whatever bling they could lay their hands on. In a matter of seconds, they made off with a whopping $750,000 worth of precious goods. Fortunately, security cameras caught glimpses of two of these robbers, giving the police a shot at catching these crooks in the act. In a daring heist in Egham, Surrey, a gang of four thieves targeted the jewelry firm, 247 kettles. Armed with a sledgehammer, they smashed through two sets of glass doors, making a quick and devastating entrance. Their loot, a hefty 10,000 pounds in cash, and a whopping 750 kilograms safe containing luxury Rolex watches and jewelry valued at 500,000 pounds.
The young owners of 247 kettles, who kicked off their business in March, were left in dismay. To add salt to the wound, they revealed they weren't insured for the loss of stock. The thieves, cunningly directing their getaway driver to Mead Lake Place Business Center, spent 11 intense minutes trying to wrestle the hefty 750 kilogons safe into a Ford Focus before making a clean escape. Imagine the heartbreak for these owners, watching their hard work vanish in minutes. Here's hoping the police can track down these crooks and bring justice to the devastated jewelry firm. In Brisbane, Australia, there's this character straight out of a twisted circus. A guy pulling off a robbery decked out in a clown mask. Imagine the scene. Under the cloak of night, he strolls into a store, armed and masked like he just stepped out of a carnival. With nerve to spare, he brandishes his weapon, throws threats at the employee, and makes off with the cash. In Point Loma, a lively grocery store fell prey to a disruptive break-in orchestrated by skilled burglars. These intruders, with a knack for avoiding specific security measures, set their sights on Jensen's Foods employee break room just before midnight on a Saturday. Adam Zack, the owner, points out the compromised wall where the intruders made their entrance. In the surveillance video, you can see the man communicating with an accomplice before skillfully dealing with a lockbox and gaining access to the electrical panel room. Once inside the break room, the intruder takes some creative measures, partially obscuring the camera and eventually breaking through the wall. What's intriguing is that these intruders manage to dance around motion detectors and security alarms. Over two hours later, the crafty thief, armed with a power tool, cracks open a large safe leaving behind a trail of significant damage. Up on the wall up here is a motion detector that points this way. Now he's cutting from the other side here into the safe. You see the room kind of shake a little bit, so he used some type of a power tool, somehow broke it open. Before making their exit, they snagged several thousand dollars and some gift cards, leaving the store with a hefty loss close to $10,000, including the expense of a new safe. And damages and uh, having to get a new safe, close to $10,000. They definitely seem like professional criminals. Uh, well organized, we think they'll be doing it again. Zach, the owner, is determined to up the security game to thwart any future incidents. Recognizing the professionalism and organization displayed by these criminals. In a crazy twist, a 12-year-old boy finds himself in juvenile detention after pulling off an armed robbery at a gas station. The whole thing got caught on camera, and it's wild. The kid, acting all calm, waited in line like it was just another day, then suddenly whipped out a loaded weapon at the counter. But wait, it gets nuts. He fired the thing into the ceiling, making everyone realize this was serious business. After grabbing $3,800, he made a quick escape. Cops didn't waste time and snagged him within five minutes, finding him crouched between two buildings. And when they busted him, the kid told the police that it wasn't just about the cash. Apparently, he had some personal reasons, and telling them would mess up his grand plan. Van Buren 911, what is the answer to the emergency? Yeah, he's right. gone in the store. He was just a little boy. He was probably like, I don't know, like maybe 10. I didn't know what to think. I just grabbed the money and gave it to him. The clerk was very simple. Matter of fact, she thought that after he fired the round that she might not see her kids again. He actually had his hands like you would possess a firearm. And uh, he actually turned towards her with his hands together. Um, he's probably very lucky that he did not get shot. He told me he did not do it for the money, that he would have thrown the money into a sewer. The firearm had been taken from a lock safe. Somehow the the child was able to learn the combination and open the safe and remove the firearm. 38 years of full-time law enforcement. Um, I've never seen anything like this. It's pretty alarming when you hear about a 12-year-old pulling off a heist with some secret plan. Kids these days are getting way too savvy, aren't they? Ever seen those 7-Eleven heists where the bad guys pull off their stunt and vanish into the night thinking they're home free? 
Well, not this time. In Carson, around 1.30 a.m., three would-be robbers thought they had it all figured out. Picture this, three of them barging in from the front and one sneaking in through the side door, ready to jump the counter and raid the cash register. But hold up, here's the twist. Less than 30 seconds later, a savvy deputy backs into a parking spot outside, spots the ongoing robbery, and knows it's time to spring into action. Out comes the deputy's weapon and he calls for backup. Before the crooks even realize what hit them, backup arrives, and the deputies swoop in to cuff the whole crew. He's coming fast, take a big for me, my head. Then another lady is take a knife for me. He's open a register, so I'm so okay, sir. I open the register, you take a money, please. We cannot hit me, we cannot kill me, please. Then I I know, okay, because I'm Lara Scare, you know, I'm Lara Scare. Isn't it satisfying to see these creeps get caught in the act? At 3 a.m. on Monday, things got wild at a bakery in Pico Union. Five masked men break in while three poor employees are just trying to make some dough. These burglars, armed with construction tools, start chasing after the employees, who are basically running for their lives. One smart worker hides in a bathroom, and guess what? The suspects, clueless but determined, are caught on video trying to crack that bathroom door. They break in and they start screaming. That's when I figure out they break in and the only reaction I had was running to the restroom. But I thought, I I'm gonna die. I, I thought they're gonna kill me. Meanwhile, security cameras captured these guys breaking in through a glass door from different angles. Now, the owner, Aguilar, spills the details the intruders force other workers into another restroom, and everyone locks themselves up. These thieves are on the hunt for cash for a good eight minutes, only to find out the bakery doesn't stash any money on site. They didn't find money, any money, because we don't uh, keep money here. Uh, at the end, they just took a basket with candies and uh, small stuff, and they left. So, what do they do? Grab pastries instead? Talk about a sweet escape. To top it off, they bolt in a new or dark-colored Cadillac SUV with a covered license plate, possibly a six-person crew with a getaway driver. He's angry. Angry because um, local governments, they don't do uh, anything uh, they, with these laws uh, to protect small business. Aguilar is left frustrated, not just with the crooks, but with local governments. He's urging them to step up and protect small businesses. A gang of burglars rolled up to Lee's Wine and Liquor Store in Oregon Township, ready for some mischief. One of these guys takes the lead, smashing the door like he's auditioning for a wrecking crew. After a few solid hits, they unlock the door, jump the counter, and snatch the cash register in record time. But that's not enough for these folks. Within seconds, they're strolling out with a safe, a cool $80,000 inside, and they're not just making a quick getaway on foot. They're loading the safe into the trunk of their ride, a 2012-2014 white Dodge Charger, and just as they peel out, the Oakland County Sheriff's Office rolls up. These guys must have a sixth sense for dodging the law. The investigators think this isn't their first rodeo. They suspect these masterminds were behind other hits at gas stations in Pontiac and Rochester Hills. Quite the spree, right? Let's cross our fingers and hope the cops catch up with them to put an end to their little heist tour. Here's a wild one for you. Four sneaky thieves, all hooded up, decide to crash an Apple store in broad daylight over in the Bay Area. They weren't messing around. They pulled off a slick heist while customers were busy checking out the latest gadgets inside. In just 20 seconds flat, they snagged a cool $30,000 worth of laptops and iPhones. Picking up computers, laptops, and just yanking them with the chain attached to the table. That's some serious speed right there. To add a cinematic touch, a fifth member was waiting in a black SUV at the front of the store, ready for the quick getaway. It all happened so fast that some customers didn't even realize they were witnessing a heist in action. We're linking them to other stores where they've hit in the Bay Area, and we're working with those agencies and trying to catch them sooner than later. The police think these crooks might have pulled off similar stunts in other Apple stores in the Bay Area. No arrests yet, but the Apple stores in the Bay Area aren't taking any chances. They're bringing in extra security.
four men, all masked up, decide to hit up the Shoot Smart Weapons store in Fort Worth, Texas at the crack of dawn, 5.45 a.m. their plan? Steal. They're not playing it low-key either. These guys are sporting some distinctive masks while hitting not just Shoot Smart, but several other weapon stores over four days. First move, they smash through a side window, bold as can be, and get into the locked cabinets. What are they after? Nine weapons. And they do not seem in a rush. They move with confidence, taking their sweet time like they own the place. Must have felt like a shopping spree for them, but it doesn't stop there. The next morning, they're back for more weapons and ammo. On the third and fourth mornings, they try their luck at other weapon stores in Richland Hills, Grand Prairie Arlington, and Grapevine, but fail. Seems like their luck starts to run out, though. In North Richland Hills, on the fourth morning, these burglars run into a cleaning crew, and they're left scrambling, empty-handed. Seems like their spree met a clean end, at least for that day. In the hustle and bustle of San Francisco traffic, a white car becomes the target of a smash-and-grab robbery. Out of nowhere, a black car pulls up right behind, and like a scene from a movie, a guy hops out, smashes the rear window, snags a bag from the back seat, and bolts off in their getaway car. Seems like these guys had been keeping tabs on their target for a while, knowing exactly what they were after. The loot? Camera equipment and a drone. It all goes down so quickly that the victim takes a moment to even realize what hit them. I mean, pulling off a smash and grab in the middle of traffic? That's some audacious move right there. Here's a scene from a regular Thursday afternoon. A hooded man casually strolling in front of a shell station on North Avenue and LaSalle in broad daylight. It's hustle and bustle, multiple drivers at the pumps, and the guy stops, lingering a few feet back. And then, like a bolt, he darts toward the car he's got his eye on, jumps into the driver's seat, and zooms off. The owner, still grappling with disbelief, watches as her Porsche McCann disappears in a split second. The thief knew exactly what he was doing. He was waiting for someone to leave their keys in, the engine running as they walked away. And sure enough, he pounced at the perfect moment. He was here specifically waiting for someone to leave the keys in and leave the engine running as they walked away, and it didn't take him long. It's tempting to leave the engine running so you can have the heater going, but that is not the right thing to do. There are thieves out there who know you're going to do that. They're waiting, they're watching. This isn't a one-time thing either. A similar story unfolded on the far northwest side where another woman filling her SUV faced the same swift car theft. It's tempting to leave the engine running, especially in the cold, to keep that heater going. But here's a reminder, there are thieves out there who know this and are ready to take advantage. It's a good lesson in being extra cautious with our wheels. It's 2 a.m., and three guys decide to hit up a Target store in Burlington County, New Jersey. They're not playing it safe either, breaking through not one, but two glass doors. These guys mean business. They go straight to the electronics section like they've got a shopping list. In a flash, they're breaking through a glass case that's housing high-end cell phones and tablets, specifically iPhones, iPads, and other Apple goodies. The haul, a cool $15,000 worth of tech. Are you serious? Oh my God, that's terrible. It's, it's ridiculous. That's a lot of time I had to work to make 15 grand. So I do begrudge them taking things that they don't pay for. Earn what you have rather than steal it. Get a job is right. Now, here's the crazy part. They were in and out in three minutes flat. They knew exactly where the case was and what they wanted. Bags in hand, they were filling them up like it's just another day at the market. They knew where the case was located. They knew the exact items they were targeting. Uh, they all had bags that they were ready to fill, fill up. We do see that other parts of the state have had similar type smash and grabs. So now our investigators have reached out to other detective bureaus trying to match them up to see if this is the same crew that hit other targets or stores like this. People really need to get a job instead of pulling off stunts like this. There's got to be a better way to make a living than breaking into targets in the dead of night. A group of thieves decided to go all in on a weapon store heist in Pasco County. Picture this, it's around 2.15 on a quiet Sunday morning at Sunshine State Armory. These guys weren't playing it subtle. They crashed a stolen truck right into the store. Like a well-coordinated team, they storm in, grabbing whatever they can in a lightning-fast 30 seconds. The getaway vehicle, a stolen blue Toyota Tacoma, ditched about a mile away, was found engulfed in flames. Firefighters had to keep their distance, worried about the ammunition potentially going off. I believe there was some uh, 
uh, ammunition left inside the vehicle. They had concerns about explosives and stuff, so they didn't actually uh, try to extinguish it. They just let it burn. Anytime we got uh, ammunition out on the street, uh, risk for us, risk for, for the for the public, and you know that, that's a concern for us. Ed Hinchy, working next door, couldn't believe this level of crime happening in Zephyr Hills. He thought this kind of thing was reserved for the big cities like Miami or Tampa. This is Zephyr Hills, ma'am. This isn't downtown Miami. This isn't Tampa. This is Zephyr Hills. God's waiting room, ma'am. And to have something like this occur, that shakes people up. Here's hoping these guys end up behind bars, learning a lesson about the consequences of their actions. A crew of robbers decides to hit up a Chanel store in Washington, D.C. They charge into the store. And as if that's not daring enough, the police show up. Now, here's where it gets wild. One of the robbers gets hold of a fire extinguisher and starts using it, not to put out fires, but to strike a police officer multiple times. While chaos ensues, the others are busy grabbing merchandise. Picture this one suspect, rocking a hood and purple gloves, just grabbing as many bags as humanly possible. One camera might have caught a quick peek of his face as he apparently takes off a glove while casually walking through a doorway. Now, that's some nerve, right? facing off with the police and still managing to pull off an escape. So, here's a wild one for you. A woman decides to try and pull off a heist at the Burger King near 41st and Memorial. Now, this ain't your usual robbery. She rolls up to the window and, for some strange reason, decides to hang out of her car with a knife. Like, half her body is inside the drive through window, and the knife even has a sheath on it. Uh, to say the least, this one's, uh... A little bizarre, a little out of the norm from what we usually deal with. She ends up at the window and for whatever reason kind of exit, hangs out her car with a knife, half her body's inside the drive through window. It's like she's trying to keep it all low key. But here's the kicker. An employee spots the whole bizarre scene and decides to take action. There's a little struggle, the employee manages to close the window, and that's it. End of the woman's grand theft attempt. There's a dog in the van barking the entire time. Now that's a real crime companion. The knife actually has what looks like a sheath on it still. still. At one point, you can actually see on, from the interior video, she does kind of reach and try to pull the sheath off, but for whatever reason, during the struggle with the employee inside, she gets her out in time to where it doesn't come off. Definitely odd behavior, not real sure what's going on with this lady. There's a dog in the van barking the entire time. We have some pretty good images of her from inside the store some things about the vehicle that really stick out. It's a gray Nissan minivan. There's actually a, uh, like a winking face painted on the driver's side mirror. Okay. Looks like a little bit of damage um, on the driver's side bumper, just above the bumper. Uh, the driver's side door handle's missing. If somebody sees her, they're gonna know who she is. In the end, she left empty-handed because things didn't exactly go according to her plan. Now, the police have a good chance of tracking her down. Her face is caught on the store's interior camera, and they're on the lookout for her gray Nissan minivan with a bit of damage on the driver's side bumper. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. In Snohomish County, there's this group of burglars thinking they can hit up a pot shop in Everett in the early hours. Bold move, right? They decide to go all in and ram their car right into the front door of the store. But hold up, things don't go as planned. A local hero, a guy from a nearby business, shows up out of nowhere. What does he do? Grabs some pepper spray and gives those intruders a taste of it.
Faster! The burglars, probably tearing up from the spray, hastily bolt from the scene, leaving their grand heist dreams behind. Now that guy, he's the real MVP, stepping up and saving his neighbors, making sure those burglars think twice before trying that stunt again. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.